All right, hey everybody, welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. Now it's December 1st, it's time to do a garden tour, and I'm excited for this one, and I'll show you why. So let's grow. Okay, so normally I start the garden tour over here, but this time I want to start where I'm, I'm really excited about, and that's right over here. What I'm excited about are the peas. Now these are finally starting to take off. These are supposed to be purple hull peas. The hulls are supposed to be a purple. That hasn't happened yet, but I'm excited for it. Over here are just some regular peas that I just threw in. And then these are sugar snap peas. And look at these things. They are producing big time. Now, this is what I love about this time of year here in zone 9A is you start to get the cold weather crops that are starting to come on. And I love it because there is nothing better in my opinion than fresh veggies out of the garden and especially peas. There's just something about them. They do not taste like they do in a can or frozen, obviously frozen, but they taste so good, so sweet, so just, I don't know, perfect. And I did a short about this yesterday or the day before. I can't say enough about homegrown peas. They're so good. But since we're over here in this bed, we'll go ahead and continue on down. Got the eggplants here. The white eggplant right there is put one on. I've got a black one, a black beauty eggplant, little baby one right there. Shifting on down, we've got the Carolina Reaper plant. One of them, I have two of them now. And it's starting, it's been putting on a lot of fruit. If you all would like to see me do a harvest and taste on the Carolina Reaper, drop it in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and just maybe <laughs> I'll do that. All right, so as I back up here, this entire bed is going to completely transform for spring. I have plans for this bed. I have not announced them yet, but that will be coming. But this entire bed is about to totally change very soon. All right, shifting over to the what was the blueberry bed that actually never took off. Still got more jalapenos growing here. This plant is two years old. It just constantly puts on jalapenos. Now this is a potato. That is one of the potatoes that I've planted in the fall potato planting video, which I'll put a link to right here. Now, the other potatoes have not come up yet, but this one has. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm happy for one. Would obviously like to have more, but it's all right. Right here is the other Carolina Reaper plant. And as you can see, there's peppers on this plant also. And then right behind it is the blueberry I'm sorry. And then right here is the blackberry bushes, both of these on this trellis system. Over here in this corner, we just got some basil that's dying. These roses are just everywhere. I really have to trim this up, but look how beautiful these are. Down below, we've got some kales in here. The kale that I planted never took off. I don't know if the seeds were old or what, but they never took off, but it's all right. We got another kale right back here. So all in all, this side of the garden is actually doing really, really good. Um, I'm gonna save that for last over there. So let's, let's jump over here. Now again, I've got peas growing in this area. A lot have not taken off in these beds. To be honest, I don't know if the soil is old and I haven't amended it enough because it is a raised bed, so um, some of the things that I planted in here never took off. I mean, didn't even sprout. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but I am over this next month going to completely amend these beds, actually all these beds, but definitely these beds right here. Um, they just really need it. And what I have planned for spring <laughs> really needs a good, solid, strong soil. So, all right, so shifting over to this bed, this raised bed, all of these squash plants, have been doing so good. Now, I did notice this yesterday when I came out to water, is I have damage here. That's how it looked before I opened it up, looking for a worm. So anytime you see something like that to where it looks like it's been gnawed on, you probably have a worm issue or a caterpillar issue. And if you come on, if I shift on down here, you can totally see how it's, this vine has just been chewed up. So I'm gonna say this, I'm not surprised that I have caterpillar damage up high on these 
zucchini plants because they are up high. They're about three feet above the ground. Now, everywhere down at the base of these plants where the mothball water is, there is no damage of any kind at all from caterpillars or anything else. So the mothball water works. I know if you're watching this for the first time, you're like, what the heck is he talking about? I'll put a link to that video right here, but that has worked completely. It's just where the, the smell of the mothball water doesn't quite reach high enough. That's where I've been having some of the caterpillar issues. But, um, but I mean, let's keep it real. You can't get rid of all pests. Pests are gonna be there. The trick is minimizing the amount of damage that they do. So. If we come in here, I just noticed this a few minutes ago. Look at this, look at the size of these peas, these beans here. Good grief. I did not see these yesterday when I was out here watering. Um, honestly, I wasn't looking for them, but that's probably why I didn't see them. But the beans are, <laughs> the beans are doing great. Um, that's probably, honestly, the largest bean that I've ever grown. I'm very, very pleased with this variety of zucchini. This thing has put on, honestly, more zucchini off this one plant than I've ever had the whole time I've been gardening. I think I've had five or six good size, like big um, zucchinis, and then that one monster one that I let just grow and grow. It got to 22 inches long. Uh, I think it was 13 inches around. I mean, it was a it was a beast. Uh, didn't taste as good as the smaller ones. It was still a very good zucchini. And as you can see, I kind of let the zucchini vine just go and go all the way over here into the container garden. Now. It is December 1st, like I said. The leaves of the fig trees are starting to fall. That's natural, that's normal. No big deal there. I, I planted beans in here for companion planting just to help, just to help uh, put nitrogen back in the soil. But I've got lemons growing over here, um, some limes, a lot of jalapenos on this plant right there. So the container garden is doing really well. No issues at all in the container garden. Period. They are doing great. Now let's shift over to this other bed. And as you can see, the queen is out here surveying her domain. No idea what she's into. A goofball. Okay, now this is the very first cinder block raised bed that I ever did, that I ever built. And I planted a lot of the brassicas in here not knowing that they would actually take off. Because last year, all of my brassicas did not do good at all. I didn't get anything from the brassicas. All the cabbages that I planted, all the cauliflowers that I planted, didn't do anything. They all just died. And they did not grow. Right, let me put it that way. They, did gr they stayed alive, but they didn't grow. This year, I mean, just look at this. This cabbage is already starting to head up right there really happy about that and i've got cauliflowers all around them got this poblano pepper plant here that's still putting on poblanos which is cool we've got a wasabi radish right there that is only in here for companion planting when those start to flower they put on um, they bring in a lot of beneficial insects to help kill the bad insects that you don't want. A lot of peppers over here, eggplant. Uh, these eggplants are not really putting on anything, so I don't know if they're about done. So that bed is doing really, really good right there. We're over here in this corner. I always like to show this corner because it is just a jungle of beauty. I mean, all these flowers, these lantanas just have gone crazy. And then I've got beautiful roses over here. I mean, this area is just beyond amazing to me. I love it. But as we shift down, we've got garlic. Carrots are doing really good. Now, one thing about carrots, they do really, 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 really well in the winter time, in the cold months. Uh, the cold actually helps put sugars into the carrot as they're growing. So if you can plant carrots now, in about four months, you're going to be super happy when you go to harvest them. All right, elephant garlic, is they are doing great. I've got eight or nine of them growing. Really happy with that. And as we shift on down, again, I've got wasabi radishes down here for companion planting. Just all through this area. 
pepper plants, and then tomato plants. Now, I planted those tomato plants really late. I think it was like three months, two months ago. I think it was two months ago. And it was just a test to see if I could get them growing this late in the year. And they are growing. So now I know what to do for next year. Happy about that, but they're about to come. Now, I'm really, really happy right through here. Again, my brassicas. We've got cabbage plants. These plants right here are probably triple the size they were a month ago. They are doing really, really good. I've got one Brussels sprout plant right there, just to give it a shot. I don't like Brussels sprouts at all, um, but I'm growing that as a test to see one, if, I can, if the soil is good for that, and two, to give away. So hopefully that plant will continue getting big and producing, and I could give that stuff, I can give the Brussels sprouts away. So coming beside the cabbages here is crimson clover. I replanted after I had that issue in the last um, garden tour. Turns out I do have mice out here. I don't know if it's because it's the cold or the garden is finally starting to produce so rodents are finding. But I do have some mice out here and now I'm having to deal with that, which I'm not happy about. It's part of it. Crimson clover is coming back and then these are all carrots. Again, carrots love the cold, so in the next garden tour, the January garden tour, you'll see just how much this is all grown. And then as we shift on down, we're almost done back here. Right in here is where I did the square foot gardening method for the carrots. Now, we're not quite to the time frame that they should start poking up, but for the January garden tour, this should really be growing up and I should have already been able to thin them out again if you have not seen the video for the square foot gardening method that i that i did a few a few videos ago i'll put a link to that one right here also okay so we're almost done everybody the beets aren't really taken off again i think it's because of the soil i did put a different type of soil in here and it doesn't really drain very well so once again i'm just having issues with these beds over here at least this bed this bed seems to be a problem I don't know I'm gonna have to really think about fixing the soil or changing the soil out in this bed but it's all right coming right beside it though look at all these radishes all of this all this green is radish and I've got what was it one two three four five I've got ten different types of radish in this one bed and I did go through and thin them all out I'll put a link to the video that I did on the radishes where I thinned them out down in the description below on over there's really nothing in this bed except I never planted I never planted this cilantro over here so I do not know how it got in this bed crazy, crazy now, I'm really crazy. excited about these this dill I mean look at the size of this dill plant this thing is massive huge this thing is I mean look how big this dill plant is it's huge I've got another one right here but it's not quite as big and then look at all this cilantro this I planted this over here, I did not plant. No idea where that came from. All right, and the last thing is the pepper bed. As you can see, the pepper bed is still doing really good. We've got no issues in here at all. And the carrots that I planted in here are doing really well also. Now, if you know anything about peppers or if you're new to gardening, peppers are a perennial. So they will come back year after year after year. Over the winter, if you have peppers, you can overwinter your peppers. But for this bed right here, since I can't take the peppers in and I don't want them to die if we do get really cold, I'm gonna create something. I'm gonna build it, I'm gonna show it on this channel. Um, more to come on that down the way. What are you doing, goofball? Hey, so that's the video. That's what's going on out here in my garden right now. And I hope in your garden, you're seeing the same kinds of things going on. Yes, we're still going to have pests. We're still going to have all the things that come with gardening, but in the winter, you start to have a little less of all the bad stuff for the most part. I do want to say that this is the time to start planting your spring garden. So if you have not started planting it, you need to start. The seed companies are going to start getting overwhelmed with orders, especially Baker Creek. They just released their 2023, their full catalog thing is 526 pages it is great i've already ordered for the most part all my seeds for next year or at least the, the majority of next year so 
Um, I'm already ahead of the game and you all need to be ahead of the game also. So start prepping your, your spring gardens. Now, I do want to say this, if you're new to gardening or you're thinking about gardening next year and you don't have a lot of space, start small, maybe start off in some containers or maybe a, a small little type of bed and then move up as you gain experience and confidence in everything and what you're doing. I would not suggest just going crazy if you're brand new to gardening. Once you do start gardening though, it's gonna get in your blood and you're gonna to wanna to be out here and you're gonna to wanna to more beds and more plants and you're gonna start getting excited about the different seeds and the different things that you can do. I get it. I've been bit by this bug. Um, it's in my blood and I'm a absolute I'm completely sold on gardening, thousand percent. And I love being out I just here. wanted to say that as a reminder, start planning your spring gardens now. Everyone, if you have not subscribed to this channel and I've earned your subscription today, by all means, please hit that little icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. Hit that bell so you're always notified whenever I upload videos. And as always, everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for being on this journey with me. I do really appreciate it. I love all y'all and until next time, Shine bright and hard as hard. telling y'all there is nothing better than veggies straight off the vine that you grew that you know everything that went into that soil you put your hands in that soil you put your love into the ground into these plants that right there was sublime If we flip around, I don't know why there's a garbage bag out here. I guess we'll take a break while the police and the fire go to whatever's going on. Say a prayer, I hope everybody's okay. <laughs>